Hilton Drive and the 4600 block of Cedar Park Way after receiving calls about a shooting around 3 this morning. We watched as crime scene investigators collected evidence, including shell casings, personal belongings, a handgun and clothing. Now, multiple neighbors tell us they heard gunshots and cars speeding off as well. One mother says the bullets were so close. She and her husband ducked for cover alongside their son. My son is in the back of the house, but he hears it so clearly as well. So our first instinct is to get down. I'm going to tell my husband, where's your gun? I'm going to check on Jordan. And that's the first thing I did. And my son was like, I'm getting my Mickey Mouse and I'm getting on the floor. Now, police haven't said what happened leading up to the shooting or the connection between the people who were shot and the person who pulled the trigger. But we will stay on scene and gather more details and bring them to you live at 5 and 6. Paula, back Thanks to you. Thanks so much. We're looking forward for that new information. We're also developing this noon. We are learning more about a pedestrian hit this morning in DeKalb County. So you're looking at what the scene looked around 7 this morning on Panola Road at Snapfinger Park Drive. That is right near the Burger King and Truist Bank. Officers tell us one man was hit and taken to the hospital. The driver stayed on scene and police are still investigating the accident. We will, of course, continue to follow these stories for you. You can find the latest online at 11alive.com or on our 11 Alive app. Well, outside, it is another sunny start with temperatures a little warmer today. I love that. I love to say that. So let's check in now with meteorologist Chesley McNeil. Hey, Chesley, I'm happy about that. It is something to be happy about, right? Plenty <laughs> of blue sky on the outside looks pretty good, but it's this that will cause the problems, right? That wind really kicking up out there and will be the case as we head through the rest of the afternoon. In fact, I'm expecting those winds to get a little bit stronger as we head through the afternoon. We're looking at gusts this afternoon uh, up into the 35 mile per hour range. So at times it will be very, very windy out there. This is around the 530 hour. So uh, that's going to be with us as you're driving home. If you have a high profile vehicle, you did OK coming in, but going home, it may be a little bit tricky. You're going to have to hold on tight to the steering wheel there. We're looking at winds anywhere between the sustained winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour, gust in the 35 mile per hour range. That means you're going to have to you know, hold on to the steering wheel, but also secure any loose objects around your home. This is a wind advisory that will last until eight o'clock this evening. After that, we're expecting those winds to begin to die off. Other than that, temperatures are OK. We're in the 60s right now, 65 degrees in the city of Atlanta. You got 61 up toward Kenton, 59 degrees up in Blairsville and Clayton and Clayton, Clayton at the current hour. We will have an upper level of service that will slide through that will bring in a few extra clouds, but as quickly as they move in is as quickly as they'll move out. So they're not going to be sticking around at all. We're going to wind up with clear skies tonight as those temperatures fall off, which means we're going to start off on the chilly side tomorrow morning. I'll let you know how cool it's going to be in the full forecast straight ahead. Paula, okay. back to you. Thanks so much, Chesley. Well, we have new details now about a devastating, devastating fire in Chambly. There is now an online fundraiser to help the family who lost both their son and their home. So this is the breaking news we first brought you at noon yesterday. Linda Price tells us she was waiting at a MARTA station near her home on London Road when she got the news. Her family's home caught on fire with her husband and their six adult children inside, all with varying disabilities. Her husband and two of her daughters kept running back into the flames to save the rest of the family, but her son Joel, who was bedbound, did not survive. My husband Kate, was able to pick Sapphire up miraculously and he got her to the floor on another one of those pink pads and Ray pulled her out. Then my husband said he was going to go get Joel and his arms were burning so bad. He went in the kitchen to put cold water on his arms. He didn't know he was already so burned and because he just wanted to get his kids out. Oh, so heartbreaking. Well, Linda's husband, Rod, and two of their daughters are still in the hospital. Over the years, the couple has fostered more than 50 children, adopted 13, and had eight of their own. The family is now in the process of planning a funeral, replacing medical equipment, and finding a new home that fits their family's need. If you'd like to help, we have a link to a GoFundMe posted online at 11alive.com. Last I checked, they had raised nearly $50,000, so we're hoping they get to their goal. Well, today, a close friend of Jamie Foxx is asking for prayers as the actor and singer marks more than two weeks now in an Atlanta hospital. Fox was in Atlanta working on his new Netflix film back in action when he was hospitalized on April 11th. We know he experienced a medical complication, but specifics about what happened have not been made public yet. In a new Instagram post, hip hop figure and film producer Charlie Mack is asking everyone to pray for Fox, writing that, quote, you're a fighter and we need you back. 
Well, today, more than 11,000 writers in Hollywood are on strike after failing to reach a labor deal. It is the first strike in the industry since 2007, now bringing many shows and films to a halt. Writers are striking because they say they are not being paid enough. They say the new age of streaming has really changed the industry. Late night shows like Jimmy Fallon or Saturday Night Live are expected to go dark today. Now, when this happened 15 years ago, Jay Leno wrote his own monologues. We're taking you outside now for a live look in Sandy Springs. We have an update to a new traffic pattern creating some chaos on a major Metro Atlanta interchange as if we need that for the highways, right? Today we can confirm GDOT has added barrels and barriers to help drivers find their way. Well, here is a look at new video we just shot in the last few hours where you can see those barriers and barrels. If you're coming from I-285 westbound, there is a new ramp to head south on Georgia 400 toward Buckhead. But yesterday, if you got on that new ramp, you may have found yourself stuck in a gore separating the two southbound portions. But we talked to State Senator Josh McLaren, who drives this route often and says he understands why drivers might be confused. Oh, I, I got off at this exit one day, but now it turns out I have to go 200 feet further. And that constant confusion, I think, uh, catches people off guard. Absolutely confusing there. So following this confusion, GDOT has added barriers so people can't sit in the gore and try to cut across 400 to exit at Glen Ridge. We'll, of course, be keeping our eye out on your commutes to see if this helps. Well, now at noon, it is time to check your bank account. The governor's office says the first round of surplus tax refund checks have been issued. So let's look at the details and if you can expect some extra cash. Well, single tax filers will get $250. It's $375 for a head of household and $500 for joint filers. But if you won't get the full amount, if you still if you still owe state money, have delinquent taxes, owe child support, or if you paid less than the refund amount and you must have filed your 2021 and 2022 tax returns in order to be eligible. Now, if you don't have your refund yet, no need to worry. If you filed by April 18th, you should get your refund by July 1st. You can check your status for both your state refund and your surplus refund right on the Department of Revenue's website. Well, next at noon, six years of existence, six years of turmoil. One of the newest cities in Metro Atlanta celebrates an important milestone as some want to leave the city altogether. That story is coming up next. Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 
Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe. Welcome back. This week marks six years since South Fulton became a city of its own. And while many are celebrating this milestone, some now say they want it to be de-annexed back into unincorporated Fulton County. Well, right now there is an online petition with more than 700 signatures. A man named Steve Littles started it. He is part of a group who voted against South Fulton becoming a city that was back in 2016. Well, Littles says something needs to change, pointing to rising property taxes and what he calls dysfunctional city government with the mayor and city council filing lawsuits against each other. You guys have reported on it, and I'm, I'm not going to say who was at fault, but it's just, I mean, we're in the news all the time uh, about something that's not going properly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. Well, Littles says a state legislator plans to write a local bill and send it to the Fulton County delegation. If approved, the delegation would put together a referendum for residents to vote on. Well, turning now to Illinois, where a freak dust storm caused a deadly highway pileup. Six people were killed and dozens hospitalized in a crash that involved nearly 80 vehicles. Here's NBC's Shaquille Brewster. Oh, oh my God! Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God! Oh, oh my God! It's just right there in front of us! I see. Oh, my God! A blinding dust storm along Interstate 55 in rural Illinois causing a deadly pileup. Authorities say excessive winds blew around dirt from nearby farm fields, leading to zero visibility on the roadway. The crash has occurred within a two-mile stretch from roughly milepost 76 to milepost 78. The terrifying ordeal happened in an instant, killing six people and injuring more than 30. Overnight, state police identifying one victim, 88-year-old Shirley Harper and releasing these new images confirming more than 70 vehicles were involved in the crash. There's another ambulance in front of us. The wild dust storm leaving behind an apocalyptic scene. Vehicles flipped over, others completely smashed. Tractor trailers engulfed in flames. Oh, God. oh still blowing up. Over 30 agencies responded. This is a difficult scene, something that is very hard to train for, um, something that we really haven't experienced locally. Officials say these kinds of dust storms are not uncommon, but the number of vehicles and casualties is very unusual. I got lucky. I didn't get crushed. I could have been. Nathan Cormier was able to drive away safely before getting out to help others. I pulled off to the left side here and got out, started going to different cars and make sure because there was cars all over the median and on the other side of the road, everywhere. In a statement, Illinois' governor calling the fatal scene horrific. My heart goes out to anybody that found themselves involved in this particular situation. It's, my heart goes out to them. Just crazy video and crazy pictures there. Well, right now, as you can see, the interstate is back open. It reopened at 6 this morning, 19 hours after shutting down. Strong winds are expected to continue in central Illinois through today. And the National Weather Service is now warning drivers to use extra caution. Well, right now, a live look at Capitol Hill, where the clock is ticking for the U.S. to pay its debt. The Treasury Department says the nation could be out of money to pay the bills as soon as June 1st. It's just less than a month away. Well, just in the last two hours, we learned U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has accepted an invitation from President Biden to talk about how to avoid a default. The meeting is set for next week between leaders from both parties. So far, the Biden administration and GOP have failed to see eye to eye on raising the debt ceiling. How's Republicans passed a bill last week to do so while cutting government spending? Well, top Democrats saying the measure does not stand a chance in the Senate. We've got to do it. $31 trillion in counting is, is too tenuous for the American people to absorb any longer. It's not uh, the way to do things, uh, to hold the entire economy hostage to your political agenda. 
Well, the Treasury Department is warning if the U.S. defaults, it could harm families, the economy and national security interest. The meeting between President Biden and congressional leaders to talk solutions is set for May 9th. Well, today, our verified team is taking on a question about your rent. Right now, as we know, prices are not going up as quickly as they were, but they are still on the rise. A viewer contacted us when she saw a sudden hike in her rent. So what can and can't your landlord do when it comes to increasing what you pay? Our Jerry Carnes verifies. Imagine the shock when a new lease arrived informing a Metro Atlanta woman that her rent was increasing from $1,170 to $1,291 a month. That's an increase of more than 10%. That renter was surprised it could happen anywhere, especially in an apartment that's part of an affordable housing program. She asked us to verify if landlords can increase rent so dramatically. Our sources are Georgia Law, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, and Dr. Taylor Shelton with Georgia State University's Urban Studies Institute. Georgia Law is pretty clear. It says that local governments here cannot regulate the amount of rent charged by a landlord. But you might be able to bargain with your landlord on an individual basis, but in, in reality, there are no legal limits on how much rent they could increase. Dr. Shelton tells us the only restriction is when a landlord can increase your rent. Typically, they can't do it in the middle of a lease. The Georgia legislature has considered changing the law to limit rent increases. They unfortunately didn't get very much traction, uh, and, and it's a very uphill battle to, to climb to do that in a state that's so uh, property rights friendly. The Department of Community Affairs tells us there are some limits when it comes to federally subsidized affordable housing. There are maximum amounts a landlord can charge that can be based on a renter's income or the median income of a county. As long as it doesn't exceed the maximum, a landlord can increase the rent as much as they want from lease to lease. So we can verify it's true. Landlords in Georgia are generally free to increase your rent 10 percent or more when you sign a new lease. Well, if your apartment is part of the low income housing tax credit program in Georgia, landlords have to give you at least four months notice if they're raising the rent 5% or more. Now, generally, landlords can wait until they offer you a new lease to noti notify you of any rent increase. And if you hear or see something online you want us to verify, send us an email. You can also text verify to the number on your screen. That's 404-885-7600. All right, it's a windy afternoon. Oh, wind's already starting to pick up a little bit there. You can see the flags over in Georgia's Rome just flapping in the wind there. Mm -hmm. But it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, plenty of sunshine around the forecast area for today. But those winds already up to about 20 miles per hour in some spots. 17 right now in Atlanta, 13 over toward the Athens area. will pick up as we head through the afternoon, getting into that 20 to 25 mile per hour range. That could blow around some things, folks, so be very careful. We'll see those winds die off later on tonight. Because of that, we have a wind advisory that will last until 8 p.m. You see area-wide, all the counties there shaded in the tan. Look at a gust up to 35 miles per hour. So I want you to secure any loose objects around your home. Maybe even seeing some of those things blown around like your trash cans, trash can lids. Got to run down the block to go get those, right? Want to secure those at least. Pollen blowing around in that wind as well. We saw it yesterday, seeing it again this afternoon. Pollen on the high side, 271 is today's count. Notice what's also high, extremely high is mold. We saw it yesterday again today. Day, high on the mold side, grass and weeds low. So yeah, we got to deal with the wind. We got to deal with that pollen. But again, it is a very nice day. It is very refreshing out there. Temperatures are in the 60s right now. We started out in the 40s this morning. It was a bit cool and now starting to mild up a little bit. 70, uh, 65 degrees rather in Atlanta, 66 in Athens, 66 over in Georgia's Rome, 59 the cool spot up there in Blairsville. Got 60 in Clayton, you're 68, almost at 70 right now down toward Thomaston. The Wizometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we could have for this time of year. Well, we got a 10. Uh, we should be in the upper 70s for highs, only around 70 for afternoon high today. Yesterday we hit 68. I think we'll be right back there again for this afternoon. Not a whole lot happening throughout the southeast. In fact, nothing going on except for high pressure that's building in off to the west of us. Uh, tight gradient causing those winds to start to spark up a little bit. Again, they will die down once we get toward the evening. 
and we'll see those temperatures fall off as well. We'll go from near 70 for a high temperature down to the 40s for overnight lows. So we'll start off on the cool side once again. Here's how our forecast track plays it out for us. Now we're going to have a little uh, wave, upper level wave that's going to slide through the area later on this afternoon. I'm thinking after three or four o'clock. It's going to add a few more clouds. So uh, for a moment, you may see mostly cloudy skies. We're not anticipating much of any rain coming out of those clouds at all, but as quickly as they move in, we'll be as quickly as they move out. We'll have clear skies tonight. Again, those temperatures will fall off into the 40s. That's where we begin our Wednesday. Going to stay right near 70 for an afternoon high temperature with mostly sunny skies. I don't think the winds will be as strong tomorrow, but they'll still be a bit breezy during the afternoon. So it continues right as we head into Thursday. Uh, we'll see those winds really start to fall off a little bit there, and we'll see the temperatures start to warm up back into the middle 70s for high temperatures by the time we get to Thursday. Friday will bring the change as far as the clouds are concerned. More clouds will start to move into the forecast area uh, starting in the morning, anywhere from partly to mostly cloudy skies, but the rain should hold off until we get toward the evening going into Saturday. So we'll be watching that, but that'll be our next best chance. So until then, enjoy the sunshine and again the wind. 71 degrees for a high temperature on Wednesday. By Thursday, an 11 live day. My pick for the week. 76 for the high temperature. 75 on Friday with those clouds building in and then the rain chance increases. It's a low chance right now. 30% chance on Saturday and Sunday and then starts to clear out as we head into Monday. Paula? Let's hope the low chances stay that way. Thanks so much, Chesley. Well, still ahead, school is almost out for the summer, and we know many high school seniors are making plans. We'll show you one nonprofit making sure there are opportunities for everybody coming up next. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m., where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News we began with breaking news this morning. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening.
Right now, high school seniors across the metro have their sights set on graduation, whether college or a job comes next. Well, one Atlanta nonprofit is working to make sure everyone has an opportunity, especially when it comes to the city's growing tech industry. Here's 11 Alive's Liza Lucas with today's Voices for Equality. From building a network to cybersecurity, students Ron Darius and Michael are learning what it takes to work in the field of tech. Usually the physical labs are my favorite parts. We connect routers, we build cables. The training all part of a new program run by the Bobby Dodd Institute. But the work happening in the nonprofit's classrooms, not a typical introduction to IT. So the Rich Academy, it's really one of a kind in Atlanta. It's IT specific for individuals with disabilities. The 20 week program is completely free. Accessible training on the skills needed to get a job in the IT industry. The nonprofit aiming to bridge the gap for those living with disabilities who may face barriers to employment. As we entered the pandemic, we saw a greater need for robust networks. There's a lot of remote work going on and then learned that there were thousands of IT jobs uh, vacant in the metro Atlanta area. To help students tap into those jobs, the program not not only focuses on the technical side of training, but soft skills like interview readiness. It can be challenging though, but when you learn, but when you learn it, you get the better hang of it. And while job placement is the ultimate goal, resources extend long after. Students get 18 months of mentoring and help to ensure success in the workplace. The self-esteem, the self-confidence that we're seeing through the process is just amazing. And seeing that support translate to success can be life changing for students and everyone involved. That's worth every minute that we spend doing what we do. What a cool program there. Well, right now applications for the next session are open. There is also an online informational session that's tonight at six o'clock. You can find the link to register now on the Bobby Dodd Institute Facebook page. Well, right now at noon, police are investigating a shooting that killed two people this morning at a home in Stone Mountain. We are on scene with new details next. Things are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News we began with breaking news this morning. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of drive. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 
11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Now at 1230, just in the last half hour, police removed crime tape from a subdivision in Stone Mountain. That's the scene of a shooting that left two people dead, another in the hospital. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens is at the scene with new details now. Until late this morning, crime scene tape roped off four different parts of this subdivision, but the scene has since been clear. Neighbors tell us they heard the sound of different sets of gunshots this morning, and when police arrived, they found two people dead and a third person had to be taken to the hospital. DeKalb County Police responded to Kelton Drive and the 4600 block of Cedar Parkway after receiving calls about a shooting around three this morning. We watched as crime scene detectives collected evidence, including show casings, personal belongings, a handgun and clothing. Multiple neighbors told us they heard gunshots and cars speeding off. One of the mothers we spoke to says the bullets were so close. She and her husband ducked for cover alongside their son. My son is in the back of the house, but he hears it so clearly as well. So our first instinct is to get down. I'm going to tell my husband, where's your gun? I'm going to check on Jordan. And that's the first thing I did. And my son was like, I'm getting my Mickey Mouse and I'm getting on the floor. And police haven't said what happened leading up to that shooting or the connection between the people who were shot and the person who pulled the trigger. No word yet on the condition of that third person who has been hospitalized, but we'll bring you those details coming up at five and six. Scary situation there. Thanks so much, Latasha. And also developing this noon, we are learning more about a pedestrian hit this morning in DeKalb County. So this was a scene around seven on Panola Road at Snapfinger Park Drive. That's right near Burger King and Truist Bank. Officers tell us one man was hit and taken to the hospital. The driver stayed on scene and police are still investigating the accident. We will continue to follow these stories for you. You can find the latest online at 11alive.com or on our 11 Alive app. Well, outside it is another sunny start, but the wind won't quit. Let's check in now with meteorologist Chesley McNeil. Chesley, it was windy this morning. Yeah, and uh, I think it's going to pick up a little okay. bit as we head toward the afternoon as well. At times, not bad at all. You're looking at uh, noon in here where the flags are okay. Now, we showed you uh, Georgia's Rome uh, not long ago, and those winds were really whipping up there. The flags flying around, and now it's kind of like, eh, with the wind, the boy, uh, the buildings could be uh, playing a role in that as well, but you can see those trees moving as well. So it's going to be a windy one for us. We're expecting those gusts to be in the 30, 35 mile per hour range as we head through the afternoon. Stopped it here by 6 p.m. And you can see where we'll have those gusts in the 30 mile per hour range. A lot of folks driving home by then hold on to the steering wheel. It may whip you around just a little bit, especially if you drive a high profile vehicle. You're looking at a uh, wind advisory that lasts until 8 o'clock. You see all of the area involved in this. All the counties nice shaded there in the, in the tan. Again, gusts up to 35 miles per hour. You want to secure any loose objects. If you can, if they haven't rolled around already out there, temperatures in the 60s, right at 65 degrees in Atlanta. We're milding up a little bit. It started out in the 40s this morning, so it's a bit cool. And now we're starting to see those temperatures warm up just a little bit. Got a little wave that's going to move through the area up here to the north where we'll add a few clouds. They're high, thin clouds. Don't think they'll steal too much from our sun. They'll move in and then move right out. We'll see the skies clear out tonight, which means those temperatures will fall off once again. It's going to be a chilly start tomorrow morning. We'll detail that for you in the full forecast straight ahead. Paula, back to you. Jacket tomorrow. Okay, Chesley, thanks so much. But well, we have new details now about a devastating fire in Shamley. There is now an online fundraiser to help the family who lost both their son and their home. This is the breaking news we first brought you at noon yesterday. Linda Price tells us she was waiting at a MARTA station near her home on London Road when she first got the news. Her family's home caught on fire with her husband and their six adult children inside, all with varying disabilities. Her husband and two of her daughters kept running back into the flames to save the rest of the family, but her son Joel, who was bedbound, did not survive. My husband pit was able to pick Sapphire up miraculously and he got her to the floor on another one of those pink pads and Ray pulled her out. Then my husband said he was going to go get Joel and his arms were burning so bad. He went in the kitchen to put cold water on his arms. He didn't know he was already so burned and because he just wanted to get his kids out. Well, Linda's husband Rod and two of their daughters are still in the hospital. 
Over the years, the couple has fostered more than 50 children, adopted 13, and had eight of their own. The family is now in the process, of course, of planning a funeral, replacing medical equipment, and finding a new home that fits their family's needs. If you'd like to help, we have a link to a GoFundMe page posted online at 11alive.com. Well, today, a close friend of Jamie Foxx is asking for prayers as the actor and singer marks more than two weeks now in an Atlanta hospital. Foxx was in Atlanta working on his new Netflix film Back in Action when he was hospitalized on April 11th. We know he experienced a medical complication, but specifics about what happened have not yet been made public. Well, in a new Instagram post, hip hop figure and film producer Charlie Mack is asking everyone to pray for Fox. You're seeing it there. He wrote that, quote, you're a fighter and we need you back. And happening now, more than 11,000 writers in Hollywood are on strike after failing to reach a labor deal. It is the first strike in the industry since 2007, now bringing many shows and films to a halt. Writers are striking because they say they are not being paid enough. They say the new age of streaming has really changed this industry. Late night shows like Jimmy Fallon and Saturday Night Live are going dark, expected to run reruns through the week. taking you outside now for a live look. Uh, this is in Atlanta. You can see right there. Well, we have a new update to a new traffic pattern creating some chaos and a major Metro Atlanta interchange. This is uh, in the Sandy Springs area. Well, today we can confirm GDOT has added barrels and barriers in that area to help drivers really find their way. So this is a look, just new video we shot in the last few hours where you can see those barriers and barrels. Well, if you are not familiar yet, if you're coming from I-285 westbound, there is now this new ramp to head south on Georgia 400 toward Buckhead. But yesterday, if you got on that new ramp, you may have found yourself stuck in a gore separating the two southbound portions. Well, we talked to State Senator Josh McLaren, who drives this route often and says he understands why drivers might be confused. Oh, I, I got off at this exit one day, but now it turns out I have to go 200 feet further. And that constant confusion, I think, uh, catches people off guard. I get it. I took that two days ago and I was very confused. But following this confusion, GDOT has added barriers so people can't sit in the gore and try to cut across 400 to exit at Glenridge. Of course, we'll be keeping your eye out on your commutes to see if this helps. Well, now at noon, it is time to check your bank account. The governor's office says the first round of surplus tax refund checks have now been issued. So let's look at the details and if you can expect some extra cash. Single tax filers will get $250. It's $375 for a head of household and $500 for joint filers. But you won't get the full amount if you still owe the state money, have delinquent taxes, owe child support, or if you paid less than the refund amount. And you must have filed your 2021 and 2022 tax returns in order to be eligible. Now, if you don't have your refund yet, do not worry. If you filed by April 18th, you should get your refund by July 1st. And you can check your status for both your state refund and your surplus refund right now on the Department of Revenue's website. Well, next at noon, six years of existence, six years of turmoil. One of the newest cities in Metro Atlanta celebrates an important milestone as some want to, want to leave the city altogether. That story is next. We'll be talking about damage and winds, hail. And How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now...
where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be... Welcome back. This week marks six years now since South Fulton became a city of its own. And while many are celebrating the milestone, some now say they want it to be de-annexed back into unincorporated Fulton County. Well, right now there is an online petition with more than 700 signatures. A man named Steve Little started it, and he is part of a group who voted against South Fulton becoming a city back in 2016. Little says something needs to change, pointing to rising property taxes and what he calls dysfunctional city government with the mayor and city council filing lawsuits against each other. You guys have reported on it and I'm, I'm not going to say who was at fault, but it's just, I mean, we're in the news all the time uh, about something that's not going properly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. Little says a state legislator plans to write a local bill and send it to Fulton County delegation. If approved, the delegation would put together a referendum for residents to vote on. Well, turning now to Illinois, where a freak dust storm caused a deadly highway pileup. Six people were killed and dozens hospitalized in a crash that involved nearly 80 vehicles. Just look at that video and those pictures there. Here's NBC's Shaquille Brewster with more. Oh my God. A blinding dust storm along Interstate 55 in rural Illinois causing a deadly pileup. There are multiple injuries, multiple injuries, multiple vehicles. Authorities say excessive winds blew around dirt from nearby farm fields, leading to zero visibility on the roadway. The crash has occurred within a two mile stretch from roughly milepost 76 to milepost 78. The terrifying ordeal happened in an instant, killing six people and injuring more than 30. Overnight, state police identifying one victim, 88-year-old Shirley Harper, and releasing these new images confirming more than 70 vehicles were involved in the crash. There's another ambulance in front of us. The wild dust storm leaving behind an apocalyptic scene. Vehicles flipped over, others completely smashed, tractor trailers engulfed in flames. Oh, God. Oh, Still blowing up. Over 30 agencies responded. This is a difficult scene, something that is very hard to train for, um, something that we really haven't experienced locally. Officials say these kinds of dust storms are not uncommon, but the number of vehicles and casualties is very unusual. I got lucky. I didn't get crushed. I could have been. Nathan Cormier was able to drive away safely before getting out to help others. I pulled off to the left side here and got out, started going to different cars and make sure because there was cars all over the median and on the other side of the road, everywhere. In a statement, Illinois' governor calling the fatal scene horrific. My heart goes out to anybody that found themselves involved in this particular situation. It's, my heart goes out to them. Well, right now you can see the interstate is back open. Still those burn marks there. This reopened at 6 this morning, 19 hours after shutting down. Strong winds are expected to continue in central Illinois through today. And the National Weather Service is now warning drivers to use extra caution.
Well, right now, a live look at Capitol Hill, where the clock is ticking for the U.S. to pay its debt. The Treasury Department says the nation could be out of money to pay the bills as soon as June 1st. That's around the corner. And just in the last two hours, we learned U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has accepted an invitation from President Biden to talk about how to avoid a default. The meeting is set for next week between leaders from both parties, and so far the Biden administration and GOP have failed to see eye to eye on raising the debt ceiling. House Republicans passed a bill last week to do so while cutting government spending, but top Democrats saying the measure does not stand a chance in the Senate. We've got to do it. $31 trillion in counting is, is too tenuous for the American people to absorb any longer. It's not uh, the way to do things, uh, to hold the entire economy hostage to your political agenda. Well, the Treasury Department is warning if the U.S. defaults, it could harm families, the economy, and national security interests. So the meeting between President Biden and congressional leaders to talk solutions is slated for May 9th. Today, our Verify team is taking on a question about your rent. Right now, prices are not going up as quickly as they were, thank goodness, but they are still on the rise. A viewer contacted us when she saw a sudden hike in her rent. So what can and can't your landlord do when it comes to increasing what you pay? Our Jerry Carnes verifies. Imagine the shock when a new lease arrived informing a Metro Atlanta woman that her rent was increasing from $1,170 to $1,291 a month. That's an increase of more than 10%. That renter was surprised it could happen anywhere, especially in an apartment that's part of an affordable housing program. She asked us to verify if landlords can increase rent so dramatically. Our sources are Georgia Law, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, and Dr. Taylor Shelton with Georgia State University's Urban Studies Institute. Georgia Law is pretty clear. It says that local governments here cannot regulate the amount of rent charged by a landlord. But you might be able to bargain with your landlord on an individual basis, but in, in reality, there are no legal limits on how much rent they could increase. Dr. Shelton tells us the only restriction is when a landlord can increase your rent. Typically, they can't do it in the middle of a lease. The Georgia legislature has considered changing the law to limit rent increases. They unfortunately didn't get very much traction, uh, and, and it's a very uphill battle to, to climb to do that in a state that's so uh, property rights friendly. The Department of Community Affairs tells us there are some limits when it comes to federally subsidized affordable housing. There are maximum amounts a landlord can charge that can be based on a renter's income or the median income of a county. As long as it doesn't exceed the maximum, a landlord can increase the rent as much as they want from lease to lease. So we can verify it's true. Landlords in Georgia are generally free to increase your rent 10 percent or more when you sign a new lease. Well, if your apartment is part of the low income housing tax credit program in Georgia, landlords have to give you at least four months notice if they're raising the rent 5% or more. And generally landlords can wait until they offer you a new lease to notify you of any rent increase. And if you hear or see something online you want us to verify, send us an email. You can also text verify to the number right there on your screen. That's 404-885-7600. Winds will be the story for this afternoon as far as the weather goes. We're looking at those winds at times just really picking up. And I think by the time we get to the later afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock, they'll really start whipping around. And by the time you're driving home from work, blowing that pollen around, blowing all that dust around as well. Not like up in uh, central Illinois, though. Hopefully, we don't have a situation like that where it's blinding. But we're, we'll see those winds pick up, getting up to about uh, sustained winds, 20, 25 miles per hour is certainly possible. We'll start to die down later on tonight. Because of that, there's a wind advisory to pass along to you. This will last until 8 p.m. Looking at, again, sustained winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusts as high as 35 miles per hour. Hopefully it's not blowing around your trash cans or any loose items in your uh, yard or on the side of your house. Hopefully you had a chance to go ahead and secure those. But again, those winds will start to pick up a little bit. I mentioned that it would blow the pollen around. Pollen high again today, You're looking at 20, 271 as far as our pollen, pollen count goes. Mold extremely high today, low on the grass and the weeds. So uh, still watching in the wind at least uh, for today and we'll do it again tomorrow as well. Temperatures are in the 60s starting off uh, this afternoon. 65 degrees in Atlanta. We got 65 also Peachtree City 68. The warm spot down in Thomas and the cool spot would be Blairsville. You're at 59 degrees. We started out with those temperatures in the 40s. A bit cool on the outside. You may have started out with your hoodie. I'm going to go ahead and say keep it on uh, as those winds will whip around. 
have something to protect you at least, protect your skin, right? Looking at a 10 out of a possible 11 today on the Wisometer. The Wisometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Well, our temperature, our, it's our average temperature, should be in the upper 70s today, only near 70 for an afternoon high. Yesterday we hit 68, so we've been on the cool side, and I think it'll stay that way as we head through the afternoon. Some of you would call that quite comfortable. I get it. I get it. Well, 10 is still close to an 11, right? Not a whole lot going on throughout the southeast. High pressure is building into our area. It's off to the west of us. Uh, we'll dominate our skies for the next couple of days, so the sunshine will stick around really for the rest of the week. Those winds will also start to die down as well. Uh, starting tomorrow, I think the winds won't be as windy as today. We'll call them breezy, especially during the afternoon, but not as windy as we see it today. And as we head toward the end of the week, those winds will continue to die down. And guess what? Our temperatures will start to go up for those of you who like it a little bit warmer for this time of year. Here is our forecast track model. You can follow along with me with the time right there at the top of the screen. I do think another level of disturbance will move into the area after about three or four o'clock. Now we'll provide a few extra clouds. So for a moment, you may look up and you see mostly cloudy skies, but it will move in and move quickly right on out. Not expecting to see any rain falling out of those clouds at all. Uh, and they get out of the way as the winds die down tonight with clear skies. We'll see those temperatures fall off into the 40s once again. So it will be a cool start for us. We'll warm it up into the 70s once again for highs on Wednesday. I'm thinking right around 70, 71 degrees will be your high temperature. A little better on Thursday for those of you who like it warmer. It's going to be my pick for the week. Mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will reach the mid 70s. I'm thinking right around 76 degrees for the high temperature on Thursday. Friday 75. We'll see more clouds moving into the area. May wind up with a mix of sun and clouds. 20% chance for the showers will come late in the day going into Saturday. In fact, Saturday a 30% chance for that rain getting it back closer to where we should be for highs right around 77 degrees. We'll hit 78 on Sunday and stay there as we start the work week next week. Paula back to you. Chesley Thursday is my pick of the week too. Well, still ahead, school is almost out for summer, and we know many high school seniors are making plans. We'll show you how one nonprofit is making sure there are opportunities for everyone next. 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dives. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Right now, high school seniors across the metro have their sights set on graduation, whether college or a job comes next. But one Atlanta nonprofit is working to make sure everyone has an opportunity, especially when it comes to the city's growing tech industry. Here's 11 Alive's Liza Lucas with today's Voices for Equality. From building a network to cybersecurity, students Ron Darius and Michael are learning what it takes to work in the field of tech. Usually the physical labs are my favorite parts. We connect routers, we build cables. The training all part of a new program run by the Bobby Dodd Institute. But the work happening in the nonprofit's classrooms, not a typical introduction to IT. So the Rich Academy, it's really one of a kind in Atlanta. It's IT specific for individuals with disabilities. The 20 week 
week program is completely free. Accessible training on the skills needed to get a job in the IT industry. The nonprofit aiming to bridge the gap for those living with disabilities who may face barriers to employment. As we entered the pandemic, we saw a greater need for robust networks. There's a lot of remote work going on and then learned that there were thousands of IT jobs uh, vacant in the metro Atlanta area. To help students tap into those jobs, the program not only focuses on the technical side of training, but soft skills like interview readiness. It can be challenging though, but when you learn, but when you learn it, you get the better hang of it. And while job placement is the ultimate goal, resources extend long after. Students get 18 months of mentoring and help to ensure success in the workplace. The self-esteem, the self-confidence that we're seeing through the process is just amazing. And seeing that support translate to success can be life-changing for students and everyone involved. That's worth every minute that we spend doing what we do. And right now, applications for the next session are open. There is also an online informational session tonight at 6 o'clock. You can find the link to register now on the Bobby Dodd Institute Facebook page. Well, stay with us. We are right back after the break with an announcement. You don't want to miss a thing. To use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. not to dance to that one. Uh, Aerosmith fans, you won't want to miss this. The band is coming to Atlanta this fall as part of its farewell tour called Peace Out. The band will be at State Farm Arena October 14th. Members say now is the time for this tour as each member is over the age of 70. Well, frontman Steven Tyler saying in a statement, be there or beware as they bring all the toys out of the attic. Tickets go on sale Friday starting at 10 a.m. And can I just say, the Jonas Brothers announced their tour today, too. And I'll be going there uh, October 1st in Atlanta. So, hope to see you there. <laughs> My mom's coming with me. Thank you for mu so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. We'll see you back here tonight starting at 5. Bro. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive.
drive storm trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Lance.